Welcome to another edition of the Kilted Homesteader. On the prior video, we talked about uh, solutions for a leaky gear steering gearbox on a 48 inch tractor. And we decided we're going to use a single lot grease after our experiments that you see in that other video that I'll post a link to right here. Now, um, with the converting it to putting grease in it versus 8090 gear oil, we have to place, put a place for the oil to come in. Well, I pulled this bolt out of the steering gear box and there's pictures online. Uh, if you Google it and look, you'll see uh, this is the bolt that you pull out and it comes from here on the gearbox. Right here and actually right now I have oil draining out of the grease that was in it coming out. And it's right there above the proof meter. You can see the, that hole is where the oil is draining out right now. And we're, we're getting it all out of there. So then we can then um, put the uh, grease in there. So we obviously got to get the oil out before we put the grease in. What we're going to do is I'm going to drill this and then tap it. Drill this bolt completely through so it acts, so the grease has a point a place to go through. And then we're going to tap it and we're going to put a grease zerk on it. And then we're going to put the bolt back in that hole. So that's today's project, today's video. And then at that point, we're going to end up going ahead and putting our single lot grease in there or corn head grease as it's commonly known until we fill the gearbox completely up. So uh, what next step we're going to do is we're going to also use a vacuum to vacuum the oil out once it's undraining. There's still going to be oil below that bolt hole. So we want to make sure that we're using it. I have an oil, a, a vacuum that will suck the oil out of the remaining oil out of that or grease, I should say, out of the uh, gearbox. So what I did was I took a, I got a brand new 7 16 by 14 uh, bolt and I've got it locked in my vise and I did a center punch on the, on the, the bolt itself. As you can see here, I actually have the bolt in upside down with a nut on the end and the flat there to keep the things flat and level so we can get as straight a hole down to the, the bottom as possible. I come in from the bottom because it's easier to find center, at least for me, on this in this situation. So we're going to tap down all the way down through and then we'll go ahead and put our grease zerk in after that after we tap the threads. So we'll go down in here real nice, slow and steady. We'll let the bit and the drill do the work. Put a little tap magic on there so it makes it a little easier to drill. And like I said, we're letting the drill do the work. We're just slowly going down through. You get nice long curls coming off there, so that means the bit's nice and sharp, which is a good thing. We'll come out and say, you wanna go slow, you don't have to go fast. Time's on your side here. Just a little bit more tap magic in there just to help it ease down through. You can also use three in one oil. I've used that in the pinch in the past, but I have tap magic I use for my uh, lathe, so that's why I'm using that over here. And the advantage of using a lubricant like that is it helps keep the bit cool, as well as it helps it to um, keep the you know keep the bit sharp also. So we're just keep going down through. You got to be careful those little shards can be really sharp sometimes you got to be real careful with them you don't want them cutting you let me take that one off got caught in there put a little bit more tap magic in there and we'll go back down through again and this is just a standard grade two bolt I saw some people use grade fives. I don't think you really need to in this application um, for what the bolt's actually doing. So grade two, I think works really well. A little bit more tap in there. Isn't that much further to go. This is only a one inch long bolt, so it's probably an actual inch and a quarter if you count the head. Back out. 
put a little bit more in. Actually, let me knock some of our, you gotta be careful around the drill, rotating drill. Clean some of the shavings off there. Put a little pat magic in there, just a couple drops. Come back down through again. And this might be the one that pushes through. Bit out, come out a little bit, back down. Just about through. Just about through. Yep, there we go, right through. Okay, good deal. We'll get this out of the vise. Okay, so now I got the uh, bolt in the vise. It's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty close. It's close enough for government work. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we gotta tap our hole. This is a quarter inch by, and 28 pitch, or, or, or uh, threads per inch. So it's quarter 20 is the tap that we're using, and that's common for grease zerks. So that's what we're gonna do. I put a little uh, lubricant right there. And we're just going to start working our way down through with this. Got to go slow and easy. Take our time. Again, don't want to rush it. You want to do it once and do it right. Going a little at a time. Then you back it out if you need to. Going down through, seems to be going real nice. Come back out and check your threads, make sure everything's looking okay. And then we'll just keep walk, walking our way down through there. Now, you can see we're starting to get our threads cut in there. It's going really well. So we got a little lubricant there and we're just gonna slowly push this tap down and thread it down in, going in. And then you're gonna come out a little bit, let the threads clear out. So you're gonna back up every so often then go back forward. There's a little flutes in the, uh, tap right there you can see and a lot of times the chips will build up in that area so it's good to back it out once in a while just so you can get those flutes cleaned out and so it's not messing up and boogering up your threads we're going to keep going down through this is going pretty easy it's cutting pretty decent threads in here so we'll back on out a little bit i'll put just a little bit more lubricant in there just to help it ease through not a lot just a just a little bit of a drop that's all you need Little drop goes a long way on something like this and just keep pushing and turning down through go down through like that that's probably about as good as we want to go and we'll come back on out and what we're going to do after i get this out of here is uh, do a, just a, a fit to make sure the Zerk is gonna go in right. And then we're gonna clean all our filings and everything out before we go putting this on the gearbox. <clears throat> so threading the tap out, it's coming out pretty decent. And we got our threads in there internally there. So you did a pretty good job. So now we'll do a test fit with a grease Zerk and make sure everything looks good. All right, so we got our quarter by 28 tap. Um, cleaned that hole out real well. And here's our fitting. We'll see how that turns in there. That seems to be doing pretty good. It's got some burrs, it feels like, on there, but it's going in. Got a little 5 16 wrench. one has got it square. So we'll try to see. Oh, yeah, there it goes. They're real nice. Real nice. So that'll go down really well. You don't want to over -tight, tighten it. You don't want to break it off. Just going to snug it up a little bit like that. It's flush with it. It's good. Now it's ready to go in the tractor. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right in the tractor again it's not perfectly centered it could be a little bit better but it, it looks pretty decent uh, for this application i think it'll work really well so now we're going to pause the video i'm going to go ahead and put this in place and then we'll show you what it looks like in place okay so we got the bolt into place with the grease zerk on it it's down there right by the proof meter to make it easier it'd probably be best to take the proof meter out i was able to work around it with the proof meter in place but if you ha happen to have the proof meter out while you're doing the project, it'll be much easier to do. So now we're gonna fill it full of the, the zero-aught grease, the corn head grease. 
I have an air uh, grease gun that we'll use to put it in there because it's going to take a lot of pumping to fill that gearbox up. And then, but before we do, we're going to take this on the 1952 8Ns, and I think maybe some of the 51s had it also. This is the fill area, like we mentioned earlier. We're going to take that screw out so air can bleed out and come out through there um, instead of having to rush past the seals, you know, to get to escape the system as grease is being put in. So we'll stop the video now and we'll start putting grease in and we'll come back to you. Okay, so the grease fitting uh, you saw was in. I used an air grease gun with the single lot grease in it, the corn head grease, to uh, fill up the gearbox down at the lower end. We took this fill screw out right at the top here. And as I was putting uh, air, or excuse me, grease in at the bottom, uh, my son was watching the top here and you could see a little air coming out. And then eventually oil started to come out. And that oil is the stuff that we couldn't vacuum out. We vacuumed out as much as possible and drained as much as possible. But the grease is obviously heavier than oil, so the grease was going down in the gearbox and forcing the oil out the top. So we kept putting uh, grease in and kept wiping up the oil as it came out until we got nothing but grease, the green John Deere grease coming out the top. So we had that come out the top and then put the, the screw back in the top, wiped everything back down. Now we're going to take it down and uh, put some simple green or some uh, purple power on the oil and clean the grease up outside. And uh, this will be done for now. So what we're going to do is, as the grease is going to be settling in there, because it's like a very, like a real soft grease that likes to seek the lowest level, and it's going to force that oil up top. So in a few weeks, driving around, bouncing around the fields, or doing whatever we do with the tractor, um, it'll settle things down and force that oil up to the top. Well, then I'll do that again. Then I'll, put, I'll take the top screw out, pump grease in the top bottom until it starts coming out grease again. And uh, you probably have to do it a couple times, but like I said, right now it's in a good position. Everything seems to be working really well and doing what it needs to do. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, I know this is a controversial subject. Some people say you shouldn't be using grease in a gearbox that's designed for oil, and I respect that. And But from my background and my experiments and looking at things myself, I'm confident this is going to work in this Ford 8N. And the, the, again, this is a 1952 model, some of the earlier models. Things may be a little different, but they could probably still be adapted to use this type of... Uh, grease system that we got going on now. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy our videos, I encourage you to subscribe to our channels. We like to get as many subscribers as we can. We're excited that we are over a thousand subscribers at this point, and it's pretty a big deal to me from a, a country boy from the small town in Pennsylvania. So I hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you on the next video.